welcome to the Write, Publish, Market podcast. If you're an entrepreneur considering writing a book to serve your business, you're in the right place. Or maybe you've already decided that's even better. I'm your host, Jody Brandon, book publishing partner for entrepreneurs and 20-year veteran of the book publishing industry. On the Write, Publish, Market podcast, in addition to learning from me, you'll meet entrepreneurs just like you and hear about their experiences as we explore all facets of writing, publishing, and marketing a book that will help your business grow in ways you might not even have dreamed of yet. Our guest today is Renee Rebar, a sales professional since 1994. After making her first million before she was even 25 years old, Renee has gone on to sell millions of dollars in products and services and trained thousands of people to sell for the first time. She is known throughout her industry as a fun, energetic sales coach who leads with heart. Renee is a TEDx speaker who offers training sessions at global conferences, on-demand courses and virtual workshops, and she skillfully breaks down her decades of sales experience. With her one-of-a-kind laugh-and-learn teaching style, you will certainly gain a new view of the softer side of sales. Welcome, 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 Renee. So welcome, my friend. I am so happy you are here today. I am so honored to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. I, I It took me forever to record your formal introduction because I kept like... I was just thinking about like how fun you are and we always laugh. And then I started laughing and then I was like, okay, my editor's going to be like, what is happening with this recording, Jody? Like, let's, so I'm going to, you know, pull it together. I'm going to pull it together. Obviously we are not going to like demystify sales in a 20 minute, you know, casual conversation, but you know, we're going to, we're going to do the best we can here over this little time. Yeah. You know, so let's start with the basics. So give us like the quick and dirty, who you are, what you do, who you serve, all the things. Perfect. So my name is Renee Rebar. There's an H in there somewhere. I have a a show that's really big in Slovenia because I guess Rebar is like like Smith over there. I don't speak Slovenian, but I'm I'm pretty excited to go there one day. Maybe I'll be a star. It's my husband's last name. I can thank him for that. But I have been selling professionally since the 1900s. So, (laughs) but I also have a lot of experience with different products and services from SaaS companies to actually products. And then SaaS led me into selling services, right? So selling the invisible. And a lot of the women that I work with today, and this sort of transitions to who I am now, they are experts in their field. They typically gain that expertise through some other experience. They worked at a company, their corporate dropouts, and they decided for one reason or a thousand to hang up their own shingle and say, I'm going to do what I do in the way that I do it on my own time, except for, wait, I have to sell myself? (laughs) Or they just came to me. They paid yeah. me for this in advance. And I just right. delivered the goods and they were like, I'm so thankful. And so there's this whole feeling that women have often. And I really feel that it is cultural that we don't want to brag. And so, well, that kind of compounds their marketing efforts, right? And yeah. then I don't want to force anybody 100%. So that might mitigate their, their, their situation with actually collecting money. And so Typically, I think when women come to me that are entrepreneurs that are experts in their field and they've hung up their own shingle, what they're looking for is a streamlined process. So Mm -hmm. I can bring that script that works for them, that process that works for them. Because some women are like, if I have to get a phone call, I'd rather stab myself. (laughs) Yeah. And others are like, I love phone calls, except they're two hours. I'm like, hmm, we can't do that. Yeah. I I listen to where they're at. Everybody has different, slightly different scenarios they're trying to move through when it comes to actually delivering their expertise in exchange for payment. Because until our mortgage companies accept goodwill and good feelings (laughs) for payment, we need to accept payment that our mortgage company accepts. And so (laughs) in that process, I think that we come through not only strategy and the logistics around selling, but also the emotional side. So Mm. when I first came online, a lot of people were like, oh, you teach mindset. And I had never really heard it in that framing, but I can't, you can't separate putting yourself out there or having a conversation with somebody from how you feel about yourself and what you're thinking about in these four inches between your ears as you're doing it. Yeah. So that's about who I am and where I where I I love that. (laughs) I love all of that. I think that mindset piece, yeah, because there's there's the one, like women don't like to brag. Women especially don't like to brag. But then there's that whole, like there's a stigma around selling, you know, like used car salesmen, like ick, whatever. And then in the online business world, there's also 
So the, yeah, like our mortgage companies are not accepting goodwill as payment. We would never, as a plumber is fixing our toilet or a mechanic is fixing our car, be like, well, is that like negotiable? Is there a payment? Like, you know what I mean? Like we would never, but we accept it a lot of a lot of us as business owners. So yeah, I think we got a lot to talk about, my friend. <laughs> so, yeah, so. <laughs> okay. One of the things, uh, you've got like a couple of like catchy things that I think are so memorable, but also so smart. So I'd like to dig into a couple of those. You say, I'm looking down at my notes here. Everyone you meet is either like the three C's, like a client, a connector, or a collaborator, right? So uh, break that down for us. <laughs> and then tell us how, like, how does that then impact your yeah. sales process. Let's talk about that. So yeah. we meet people all the time and yeah. we get to know them in different contexts, right? Maybe you meet somebody at an event. Like I, had an, I hosted an event recently and you were there yeah. and you met people in a certain context. Yeah. And then you might meet somebody at a local chamber of commerce meeting or something like that. Yep. You meet them in that context and other people you might meet because you're out with friends uh, or at a, a, maybe you're supporting a local artist or at a book signing and you meet them under that context. The problem that we have is that we live inside our own head and no one else does. And so we think if they've met us that they must know everything about us. They must know everything we know. We'd assume that. And that assumption, unfortunately, is a lose-lose. So when I say everyone that we meet is a client connector or collaborator, what I'm truly trying to convey is keep the conversation going. Ask questions. Always ask first. Like that's the beginning of my sales process. It's not, hey, look at me. Look what I got. Check this out. Hey, you know, it's yeah. Let me ask you questions until we can understand each other and where we're both coming from. That might take time. It might take time over time. I might, it might be like, well, I meet the person a couple minutes here. We book a little coffee and strategy session. Yeah. 15 minutes later in a 30, you know, 30, 30 days from now, it could be maybe they're on my email list and they get emails from me. It could be that they follow me on LinkedIn and they read my content and articles there. Yeah. So it could be a lot of automated that I don't know about, but also high touch that I do know about points of reference. So as I get to know someone, as I'm asking questions, what I'm trying to figure out is where they fit in my life and where I fit in theirs. When I get to know somebody and I'm asking them questions, I'm just as open to being their customer or client as I am to having them be right. mine. Yeah. And I think that that's something that we forget about. Oh, I'm not going to, why would I talk to that person? They're not going to buy from me. I don't know. Yes. Maybe you'll buy from them. Or maybe you know somebody that they don't know that you could make that person's life a hundred times better just because you made the connection. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Introductions and referral are like, it doesn't always have to be a formal referral process. It's just like, oh, you know who that made me think of? My friend Renee, she would be a great person for you to talk to. Let me introduce the two of you. Correct. Yeah. I like that you also hinted there about, you know, like the time. Like you have no idea sometimes, not you, Renee, you, everybody right. listening, you, me, all of us, about oh. how long sometimes it takes for someone who might become a customer or a client. You know what I mean? There, are, I mean, I just was on a discovery call a couple of days ago, last uh, late, end of last week. And she said, I've been listening to your podcast since it came out. God okay. bless you. Yeah. Right? right. And I was like, well, that is, I mean, first of all, that's a lot of episodes. Thank you very much. Hope you've left a review. <laughs> I digress. But I'm, you know what I mean? Like, and I, this person was not on my radar at all. Right. But I mean, what if we had been introduced at the very beginning? And I mentioned a podcast and would assume nothing's ever going to come of it. And then literally years later, here she is booking a book brainstorm session. So I think that we sometimes think if someone doesn't move through our funnel mm -hmm. in 30 days or whatever, like, oh, that person's never going to be a client. Yes. And that's Correct. not the case, right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So client, connector, collaborator, I want to be, I, I want to be nice to everyone. Of course, obviously that's sure. unspoken, but I also want to be curious about everyone. And so I think that my my mm. English major, I was an English major, creative writing major in university, and I went into journalism initially. I was planning on going into law school until I found sales, because honestly, sales fit all those bills. I love being creative and writing. OK, well, that's where scripts and marketing and sales all come together. I love being able to ask questions. I love being nosy. Hello. Uh, who doesn't? Oh, no, wait, that's, maybe that's just my family. No, that's me too. That's me. Okay, good. Yep. So I love asking questions, which is perfect for sales. Also great for journalists. Also yeah. great for lawyers. And so I, I combined those loves of things. And if I can keep my curiosity cap on, my journalist cap, I can get a lot further in life with everything yeah. without 
assuming that everybody knows what I know or that that everybody is or is not a customer. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a good word. Curiosity. Very good. Very good. So how, like, how would you say, other than my, like the long time frame I did, like, how does all of this impact sales? Is it just that curiosity factor, just staying open to? It is. So yes. Yeah. And right. So okay. now you're thinking, so that if we're at this point, we're like, okay, she's telling me I should meet people. I, I do meet yeah. people. Okay, great. That's cool. All right. So I'm supposed, to ask, I'm supposed to ask questions. Okay. I'm asking questions. All right. I got it. Check, check. But how do I keep track of everybody? Like that was my next question, at least like, cool. Well, how do I, I mean, is it just like, I hope it all comes to, goes to plan? No, (laughs) not Austin Powers. We're not going to just Dr. Evil, right? I'm just going to hope it all goes to plan. No, we want control. I'm not a gambler. I want to have, and I, I want to have my hands on the wheel. Yeah. What does that mean specifically? So that meant I needed to have a place, a container where everybody that I met, regardless of under what conditions or context, I had an easy way to get them into one place that I could pay attention because I can't go on Facebook, go on Instagram, go on LinkedIn, go on TikTok, yeah. create content, look at my stuff. I'll comment on yours. Look at my email, write an email, create a blog. Yeah. I'm not even doing the work I know how to do. Who right. knew I needed to be a plumber and a digital expert, right? I mean, yeah, I'm a, right. any business that you have, you listening, you, Jody, me, anybody, we're very good at the thing we're good at. Yeah. I respect all these other stuff. Yes. So, Yes. In 20, you know, we have to have these skill sets to a certain extent, awareness of that there is social media, there are these digital assets, there are automations. But the biggest question is when I meet people and I'm trying to decide where they live in my life, connector, client or collaborator, and I know that it might take a short period of time or a long period of time, I need one place they can all live. So for me, for the last X amount of years, it's been, you know what, I'm so glad we met. I would love to have you in my community. That seems like an easy place. They don't have to necessarily admit that they need or want or are curious about sales training to yeah. come into my community. Now, there are certain people that will never, ever, ever join a Facebook community, regardless of how much I say it's great. Mm-hmm. And so I have another alternative. Now, listen, I have this coffee chat that I do, this group coffee chat. It's a happy half hour. We get together yeah. on Zoom every so often. I'd love to invite you to that. Can I have you there? So regardless of how they enter my free Facebook community or this in this uh, inspiration of happy half hour, we bring in whatever beverage yeah. we want in our mug and we hang out for a little bit. It's not, com- I'm not committing to any time. I'm not saying I'm doing it monthly or quarterly. Right. I would be so often. So you should probably sign up so that you know when it happens next. Very nice. Into one place, which is my email list. And that is the place I have chosen. I don't sell how to build your email list for a living, but there's lots of people that do. And I think they have good reason. So I need, or you listeners need one place to collect the people that you can yeah. easily pay attention to. That can mean when you do any kind of social media marketing or other content creation, like a podcast or webinar, masterclass or bundles or summits or whatever. Whatever, yep. That you know, you can check one place and go, I wonder who's coming in today. Well, who's been opening up my email or who's opted in, even if mm-hmm. you haven't sent 27 emails. Right. That's another thing that I see, they see people kind of tripping up on. I think that with sales, to demystify it, what I really would want to encourage everyone to know is you're going to meet all kinds of people. If you have one place to connect with them, or at least look after them, look for them, you can remove a lot of the rocks you think are in your way. And half the time, it's just about inviting them to something. Yeah. You say that so casually because this is what you do, but I'd like everyone, if you didn't notice it, just go back and listen to how Renee was talking. The way you invite, you make people feel so comfortable And that I think doesn't come as easy to everyone, but you can practice and get, it gets easier. You know what I mean? Like, Hey, I have this thing I'd love to invite you to. It's not about like, Oh, I would love to take your money and have you sign up for this thing and pay me to do this. No. That's just just one option. I mean, that might happen. I'm not taking it off the table. Absolutely. Right. But But, yeah, but you start with a, like, it's, it's, I mean, it's so casual. It rolls right off the tongue, right? You know, I'd love to invite you to, I have this thing. Correct. So that right there is where I start the custom sales process yeah. is okay. everybody has a different place that they yeah. feel comfortable. So in even my free training, I share this, like, listen, where do you feel comfortable? I feel comfortable in a community, hosting a community, being a hostess virtually mm-hmm. or in person, which you've experienced personally. Yes. Yeah. I feel comfortable like that. Yeah. But that is not some silver bullet recipe for everybody because- right. If, if like my husband, he hates when we have people over, he's like, I think I have to work late that day. What day is it? 
<laughs> Whatever day it is, I do. Whatever day it is, yeah. I feel like I'm not available then. <laughs> He's like a classic introvert yeah. and I, every introvert needs an extrovert, right? That's so right. Yes. I also, mo, I would say more than half of my clients are in like card holding flag waving introverts, right? So a lot of the exploration we do at the beginning is deciding and right. testing how they feel. Where is that place that they that they feel good about saying, Hey, I've got this thing. I'd love you to come check it out. Or I'd love yeah. to invite you to. Yes. Yeah. Well, and it, the more comfortable you can get with that piece of it, you know, like then everything else gets easier from that point, right? Again, with practice. And okay, so and we've got them in now. We've got that one place. And I know you're a big believer in the follow-up, your favorite F word. Yes, it is my favorite F word. <laughs> but if I have to be in charge of remembering and then finding time yeah. to, and then actually doing the follow-up, well, I can't be trusted. Just like I can't be trusted with Oreos in the house. Okay, so don't... <laughs> You can bring them over, but you should take them with you. Right, right, right. I gotcha. Hey, business owner. If you've listened to this podcast for a while now, you know how important I think a writing routine is. Preferably one that's in place before you begin that book writing, though it's never too late. So if you'd like some guidance in developing one, I've created the Ready, Set, Write Challenge for you to help you figure out where, when, and how you're the most productive writer. That's going to make your book writing so much more efficient. Check out jodybrandoneditorial.com slash ready, set, write. Now back to the show. I know thyself. So I have created systems to protect me, right? I know what I am like. <laughs> so <laughs> I created emails, not all at once. God help me if I had to sit down and write 36 emails, but I created emails over time mm -hmm. where once somebody enters my house, if you will, that's kind of how I look at it, my virtual yeah. home, either my free community online yeah. or my free, you know, coffee chat group, group coffee chat. It's a group, by the yeah. way. So it's yeah. like, it's not just one-on-one-on-one -on, -one -on, -one on my calendar all the time, because that's a lot. That's a lot. Yep. It's a lot for me and them or some other way. Like they, they're in my email list and I can say, well, I'm so glad that you're here, but through these emails, that's what does my follow-up. So I okay. have created a system for me to automate my follow-up. And that truly, Jody, is part two of where I customize someone's sales process is okay. we did what their easiest path to follow up with looks like. Does it look like the way I do it? Does it look like these other 10,000 ways that we have available to us thanks to the internet? Yeah. Okay. Love that. Okay. And so what are some other ways? If you're not, if email's not your thing, what should people be thinking about? Well, I've seen people do group chats, right? So mm. it's not very difficult. So if someone really likes LinkedIn or Facebook or okay. Instagram, they could have a group chat. There's also uh, other ways that I've seen people really work on is spotlights or panel discussions, or mm. so they, they're basically saying, listen, when you come into this certain point of my world, like now you're in my email list, if email is not my thing, or if, if, or if, you know, wherever you've contained them, yeah. if email is not your thing, then where else can you continue to have, ask questions, give them information, yeah. education, that can look like Circle, which is an app that people use. Yep. It can look like Telegram. It can look like WhatsApp, a WhatsApp channel. It can be different topics, yeah. it can be different yeah. times. Hey, you're in the WhatsApp channel that we're talking about, Wales. Well, that's ending on the first of the month. And so do you want to be in the next one? Love it. Yeah. I. So all that to say, there are lots and lots and lots of options. And you just did something again that I want to talk about. You end, I, this is, I think this is the biggest thing I've learned from you okay. in the time I've known you. Every interaction ends with a question to yes. keep the conversation going. And I had heard you talk about it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to really start paying attention. And you do it so effortlessly, but it does. It keeps a conversation going. And again, whether you're looking for someone to be a client, a connector, a collab, whatever. Right. But how is anything going to move forward if a conversation stops? Absolutely. Just like. <laughs> Like, so you're saying there's a chance. Right? Like, <laughs> dumb and dumber. So for you, yeah. Jody, I mean, like the na the natural, most natural thing is a book club. I, you don't, I'm sure you don't care oh. what book they're talking about as long as they're talking about books. Right. I a book club once. And it was because I was, again, exploring different ways to yeah. have people keep talking to me. I don't do what you do, but a book club was just a, a it was just a container. 
Right. Three day container. Hey, good idea. And what we did, because I didn't want to choose the book. And I'm always the girl at the book club that just brings the wine and just listens to what you read. (laughs) (laughs) And don't curl up with a book. I can listen to a book while I'm on the treadmill. It's, you know, Uh know thyself. this is the big takeaway. Know thyself. (laughs) Everybody's different. So I had a book club, a couple for a couple months, and it was you all picked the book on your own. And then together Mm -hmm. we'll talk about all the different books you read with wine. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So we didn't have to like that's have a book. I didn't have to like say, this is the book that I This recommend. is the book this month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Read anything. Are you oh reading? Gosh. Do you read? Me too yeah. sometimes. <laughs> I listen mostly, but let's just talk about books. Because what are we really talking about? Business for me, at yeah. least. Right? Yes. About bi- I was, re- I was, we were doing nonfiction books. Yeah. Love that. Oh my gosh. That's so smart. I'm going right. to have to get, I'm going to pay you a referral fee now yeah, if I take that idea. Of ideas. <laughs> So when I get to talking with someone and I hear about who they are, what they're comfortable with, who they've already sold to, the conditions and circumstances under which they've sold to them, I will begin to get more and more specific ideas about how they can, and I say effortlessly, it should feel like effortlessness. Yeah. One thing that my clients tell me that I say all the time, which I I didn't realize it until later, is be the water. Like, Mm. and what I mean by that specifically is, Water doesn't run uphill necessarily, but water wins. Like, look at the Grand Canyon, <laughs> look at Niagara Falls. I live. Yeah. So like, like the water wins because it's, it's consistent and it doesn't try to do stuff that water doesn't do. Love that. Well, and if you've done all of those things, like you're saying, and you've made, you know, you've got all these automations, so you're not constantly, you know, like trying to reinvent the wheel and all of this stuff. A system for follow-up is huge. I feel like then sales, it's just a continuation of the conversation. It doesn't have to be that icky thing, the stigma, all of that stuff. It just becomes like the next step versus. Correct. So let's, let's kind of recap for a second. You're out in the world meeting people. Maybe it's Facebook groups. Maybe it's virtual. Maybe it's in person. However you meet people, you meet them under different contexts all the time. The goal is find one place that you feel comfortable inviting them to that you can check and look for them on a regular basis. That's easy for you. Me, it's email. Great. Because I have all roads lead to my email, right? That yeah. no matter what, whether it's book club, co- group coffee chats, or my yeah. Facebook. The next step is keep talking to them. <laughs> keep yeah. asking questions. Find reasons to keep asking questions. So whatever container you've chosen, look for ways to keep asking questions. Because when Perfect. people start talking, sometimes they keep talking. And that's always good for business. Because right. you might be able to refer them. Yeah. See that they have a problem that you would certainly know how to solve or something else. But lastly... Now that you have these people that you've met, this container where that you check and these questions, these conversations happening, when you have an offer that you want to make, you have people to talk to, at least yeah. about the offer. Yeah. And you don't even necessarily have to be the ones that buy it. Because, I mean, this is, I think, a big demystification of the internet. When I launch a program, most people think, oh, you must sell thousands. I'm like, well, I have thousands of people, tens of thousands of people in my, in, on, on my email list. But guess what? If I sell 25, I hit my sales goals. 25. Mm-hmm. That means 25 people have to think I'm the one at that yeah. moment for now. Right. right. <laughs> that yeah. Limit, for that length of time. That's it. How many do we really have to sell of whatever we're selling to yes. make the world go round, to hit our sales goals, to live our lives, to do yeah. the thing we came here to do? Yeah. Not that many. So when I have that group of people, now I can say, hey, if I, let's say I have a book club and I'm you. Hey, I've got this idea for this thing that I'm doing, or I've got this new incentive for these, these sessions that I've been running. I wanted to float it past you. Can I send you the Google Doc just to get you to take a look at it? Yeah. Yeah. I, do that. I am genuinely asking them to look at it. Sure. But something that might happen is they might go, oh my gosh, can I get this? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Overcomplication is a problem like it is nobody's business <laughs> in the business like world. They, oh I mean, God, this is such a good idea. I wanted to share this with Jenny over here, but I I forgot. And now I'm going to do it because everybody has ideas and people that they know. Yeah. You yeah. Don't. Absolutely. Oh, I love it. That's yeah. No, you're right. Well, I mean, that's a great segue into books yes. because do I tell my clients all the time, especially with nonfiction, do not write an entire book. Do not take the time and effort and all of the things if you don't have the people who will be interested in buying this book, because yes. it's going it's going to be awful in so many ways. I mean, <laughs> it's going to really do a number on your self-esteem. I can tell you that. But also like what a waste of all of your talent and effort and resources that are pulling you away from whatever your zone of genius is while you put on your writer hat 
so yeah, let's let let's talk about that. Let's talk about, about books yes. because books are like I mean I I say all the time the the curse and the great thing about a book is that it's out there, right? right. It's out there. So if like if the launch doesn't go like you wanted it to go, let's make a long term marketing plan. Yes. But you know it's out there, so you got to keep marketing it. <laughs> so. <Yes. laughs> So how do we translate some of those ideas of yours mm-hmm. into the book world? Perfect. So, well, I mean, the traditional is, hey, I'm going to giving away a free chapter, yep. grab this chapter, and then let's see where it goes. I have done where I've given away eBooks in essence, yeah. uh, 10 eBooks when you buy a coaching session, you know, that, that I've used it as a bonus. Uh-huh. I also ask people hey, listen, I have this story that I want to tell in this book that I'm writing, or I'm writing a book, or I'm, I'm thinking about writing a book, or I'm on the last chapter of the book, wherever you are in that book writing process, or if it's already published, hey, I wrote a book and there's a couple stories in there um, that I'm thinking about editing or shifting for the next edition. Mm, love that. Right? There's always a new Brilliant. edition. There's, I'm working on one right now. There sure is. There are, that's exactly. correct. You when are I correct. learned that about books, I mean, I don't know why it hit me on the head like a rocket. I was like, oh, there's always a reason to talk about your book because there's always a new edition. And yeah. what do I ask? Hey, I'm considering adding some quotes from some experts in, in diverse fields to the next edition of my book. So-and-so, such-and-such, mm-hmm. such, this book. And I was wondering if you might have a few minutes, if I could send you one question, get your answer, and then maybe you'll show up in a book. Love it. Yeah. Well, and I mean, and the recipient of that email feels great. Yes. Right. Who doesn't yes. want to, who doesn't want to be included in something like that? Who's yeah. like, no, you know what? I think I'm all right. Maybe. Right. <laughs> and it gives me content along the way. I can say, Hey, I just interviewed these three people, or I just asked these three people, these questions, yeah. tag, tag, tag. Who else wants to help me with the next edition of my book? Link to book. Yes. Or and did book. everyone notice that Renee just a- ended that with a question? I hope everyone (laughs) noticed that Renee ended that with a question. Not just, oh, hey, I've got these people, but who else? What comes next? The last sentence should always be a question because, yeah, because dot, 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 we're humans. We love cliffhangers. Look at how Netflix feeds us. They're never, or or days of our lives back in the day, right? Right? Like I could watch it for 20 years and I have, I still don't think anything's happened, but every time I did watch, I was like, oh, I got to watch the next one. Oh my God. You know what? I watched General Hospital for, I think, 35 years. Because my grandma watched it when I was growing up. Yes. And I like watched it then through college, after college. I finally cut the cord on three o'clock. Yeah, it's three o'clock, ABC. I cut the cord. And when I had the flu earlier this year, I was just laying on the couch, you know, watching TV or whatever. And General Hospital comes on. And Renee, I kid you not, like I could tell you what was going on in half of those stories. I haven't watched that show in 20 years, but like 100%. But we want, we yes. want the open loop. We, we yes. seek the open loop. So asking a question keeps the loop open so that you keep the conversation going. You're not nefariously trying to, you know, draw them into your web. Yes. It, what would happen? Like for real, anybody listening to this, what would actually happen if someone paid you to be the expert that you are? Are they going to be hurt? Is their life going to be worse right. off? No. Right. If you're listening to this podcast, chances are you would rather stick a hot fork in your eye than not come through for someone. Absolutely. So why are you yeah. so scared to make them an invitation if the th- if the scenario is right? Yeah, yeah. I love that it, you didn't realize at the beginning this was about mindset <laughs> because now you're like, huh? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> No, no, it's all, it's all, it's all tracking. <laughs> it, all, it all loops back around that open all loop. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my gosh, this was so stinking helpful. First of all, like myself, I think it was helpful, but I, I love the, the looking about looking at the book idea, but then like pulling back and then just like, what can we get out of this? Like for our bigger right. purpose there. I mean, so many little good nuggets here. Thank I you. worked That's with right. somebody for a long time. Who's a book yeah. publisher was a ghost writer, bought a publishing yeah. and every single time he would meet someone. And again, he's a man, right? So in, if you're listening to this, you know that I've been talking about working with women. I do work with men when they're like, I know you work with them, but can you work with a man for, you know, are you okay? I'm like, well, obviously I'm okay. But <laughs> like, he was a man and he, yeah. I, this is where he won because it's what I teach. And he just did it naturally. And I'm like, where'd okay. you learn? He's like, oh, I just do it. 
He was also a former lawyer. So maybe this all came kind of came together because asking questions. Now, yeah. Yeah. Much. We would go to events together. That was part of our contract. I would go to events and I would kind of, you know, help him facilitate and follow up with the people that he met. But everybody he met, he would start the conversation. So what do you do? Oh, I'm a dentist. Oh, you know, I'm thinking about writing a book about a dentist. I'm, I want to ask you some questions. Oh, OK. Mm. Bam. Immediately call booked. The questions he asks are all about how they're a dentist and how the, and he just says like, well, that's perfect for writing a book. I don't know. Have you thought about writing a book? We should outline a book. I have an awesome offer for you. I'm going to give it to you because I met you at this conference. I usually charge this, but I'm going to give it to you for this. We'll just outline your book in three hours. It'll be over. Okay. Bam. Done. And it's yeah, fun. Done. You're writing a book. $80,000 is what he charges to write the book for them, or he can coach it through it for 20. Wow. Yeah. He didn't have to get yeah. that many clients a year to hit his sales goals. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when like when we really step, take ourselves and our emotion out of it, like it really is that simple. Like, and we think about writing a book. I'm like, you're thinking, and then after I'd be like, you're thinking about writing a book? He's like, well, I just thought it up then when he started talking yeah. about it. It's <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay. I get it. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> like <that>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I, yeah. You know, obviously we're not going to be psychologists here. Like, figuring it all out. But like, I do think most of us, we're just in our own way, right? We overthink, we overcomplicate, we're in our own way. You think, oh, so, I have this offer this be so good for some people. And I work so hard on creating this offer. Yeah. And then like, who are you going to sell it to? Well, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's you know, I got to do marketing. I need a social media campaign. Should I do TikTok? I think I need yeah. a video. You know what? I need a photo shoot first. Hold on a second. Before I get that photo shoot, I should probably get a rebrand on my website. And all of a sudden I'm like, whoa. Oh yeah. If you oh. give a mouse a cookie, right? It's <laughs> <you> yeah. <laughs> To get exactly. If you give a mouse a cookie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I I have young nieces and nephews, so I'm, I'm still in that world. Watch. And no, I, right. yeah, it's, I mean, it really, and, like, scissors I would, and tape and drawing and a, mu- a moose of muffin. I mean, that whole series. Yeah, of I know. Yeah. It really, well, and yeah. And how much of it is like our day-to-day lives as business owners? Yeah. We're in our own way, which I think is one more reason why, like the simple things that you have, easily memorable, you know, like favorite F word, follow up, love that. Like, you know what I mean? Like, those are the things that we all need to be heeding. So thank you, my friend. This was delightful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you listeners. I can't let anyone leave without a reading recommendation. And I know you've got some, even, even if you've only partially read it while you're on your treadmill drinking your wine, I still want it. Because honestly, I might start reading books that way. That sounds pretty great. <laughs> it's actually really good. We're walking the dog or folding laundry or the things that we have to yeah. do anyway, right? Yeah. So I have read this book. I have it in print and I do recommend it and I give it out to people. And it's by a woman. Her name is Barbara Stanny. She is the daughter of the R in H&R Block. She is, I think, in her 80s now. And she's one of those authors. You're like, wow, she was in church basements teaching women money issues, how to handle money in the 70s, you know? Oh, wow. Ahead of her time. She has a book (laughs) called Overcoming Under Earning. But what got her on the map was Secrets of Six-Figure Earners. And that book is a great lesson to all of us would be or are authors. And the same realm that I just talked about with my other client, which is she used the book to as a reason to reach out to six-figure earners. Yes. You wanted to be, get in the room with them, create proximity, ask them every question that she ever wanted to ask for free. They probably charge for this stuff or don't even right. talk about it. Yeah. Write it in a book, document it. It's all them. And then, of course, they want to share their book that they're in with everybody they know. Her yep. name's on it. They're not the author. They were interviewed. Yes. And then, I need Barbara in my life. She's so good with money. That's their story. She right. is money now because she just yeah. did all these interviews and she learned a ton. And, of course, she brought her own life experience into it. So sure. Overcoming under earning is a lot about how we look at how much we're making, even if we're already making six figures. So that mm. is the book that I recommend and do reread as a part of my new year ritual every year. Okay, I like that. But to our point and what we're trying to talk about today, which is her book, Secrets of Six Figure Earners, yeah. that is what got her on the map. And it's because she included other people by yes. asking questions to a point that she wanted to learn more about and that other people cared about. Love it. Oh, love it. I have not read that book, but it does sound like a good new year repeater. It Love is. that. Love that. All right, Renee, where is the best place for people to connect with you? I think, I mean, I think I know the answer, but I'm going to let you say it. So I don't... Well, the core center of it all, because if, on a, if they're listening to a podcast, you know, there's definitely audio. I have podcasts and yep. I'm a guest on them. And I also have lots of other content. The home of all homes is just my website, which is my name. So yep. renee rebar.com. That'll give you the chance to enter my world 
AKA my email <laughs> and in a it. lot of different ways. And even if you don't choose to be listeners on Facebook, yeah. you can still find other ways to connect. And the cool thing about being on my email list, if you actually do hit reply to any of my emails and ask me something, I actually answer you. <laughs> I believe that. I actually know that that's true because I've done that. I, yeah, uh, the website is fantastic. I will also, your Facebook group is, is I'm in very few groups at this point. I am not a Facebook girly, but your Facebook group is, it's very active and it's filled with lots of great people trying to like give, 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 which I appreciate very much. So yeah, this was a delightful conversation. You're one of my very favorite people. And I'm so happy that you same right back opened at. your heart and your mind and shared all of this with us today. Thank right. you. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Write, Publish, Market podcast. I know just how busy your schedule is as a business owner, so I'm grateful you've taken some time out of yours to journey into the world of book publishing with me today. If you are looking for even more book writing, marketing, and publishing information and support, check out my mentorship membership, the Author Entrepreneur's Lab, where each month we take a deep dive into one element of the book world with education, a Q&A session with me, your book publishing expert, resources, co-writing times, and so much more. You can learn more at the link in the show notes. I hope to see you inside the lab.